This is a third-party Nintendo Switch dock. Just a few years ago, there was kind of a stigma going around about using these, but is that still the case in 2022? Let's talk about it. In the early days of the Switch, if you wanted to buy another docking station to go to another room on another TV, you had to buy the official Nintendo dock. Now, that was $80, and that did not include the AC adapter, which was needed to play. The AC adapter, officially from Nintendo, costs $30, so upwards of $100, just to play that Switch on another TV without having to unhook everything, go into the next room, and plug everything back in. Now, at the time of recording, the official Switch dock, directly from Nintendo, is now down to $60, and $70 for the new OLED dock, which is a little bit better, but it's still pretty expensive considering you still have to buy that AC adapter directly from Nintendo for $30. The Switch officially released in March of 2017, and a few months after, third-party docks did start to release. And what's nice about these third-party docks is they offered a different form factor and different port selection than the official Switch. This one's from Goalie Kit. This one is nice because it has a smaller form factor. It has this little magnetic piece that kind of pops right up, holds the Switch in place, and when you're done and you need to bring it somewhere else, it pops right back on, and you can take it and go. It does have a smaller selection of ports, though, than the official Switch. It only has one USB port, an HDMI and the USB-C to plug in the charger. And you have to make sure to use the official Switch charger because that stigma that I mentioned in the beginning was actually related to the amount of power that these Switch docks provided to the Switch. Now in 2017 when the Switch released, USB-C was around, but the power delivery standard that pretty much every device uses today hadn't been solidified yet. So Nintendo had to go by their own standard, which is actually kind of a weird one. The AC adapter for the Switch provides 39 watts of power, and that's at 2.6 amps and 15 volts, which is a very interesting combination. Now, with the issue with the third-party docks was that they were providing too much power to the USB-C port in the Switch. They were going by some other standard. Maybe they were going by power delivery. Maybe they were going by their own, but it wasn't providing the same voltage and amperage that the Switch was looking for. Now, that was causing some piece of hardware within the Switch to basically burn out, causing the battery to not be able to charge. And once that battery hit 0%, you couldn't charge it back up, and the Switch was basically unusable at that point. Now, the really weird thing about this issue is that these third-party docks were actually working fine for a while, for several months before there were any issues. And what seemed to happen was Nintendo released their official 5.0 firmware, and after that firmware update was when these switches started to have these problems. And now the 5.0 update, I'm not sure what was in it specifically, but there must have been something in it that had something to do with how the switch regulated power, and it caused these third-party switches to provide too much power and it damaged these devices. These days, companies like Gully Kit and plenty of other ones still make Switch docks. They do make them a little bit differently, though, from what I understand. Some of them are more compliant with what the Switch needs for power. Um, and a lot of people say as long as you're using the official Switch AC adapter, you should be fine. Now, word of warning, there's still no guarantee today that if you buy a third-party dock, even if you buy the official AC adapter, you still could run into a problem. With all that being said, I guess the big question is, can I recommend one of these third-party docks in 2022? And if you asked me that in 2018, I would have said no. But in 2022, as long as you're using the, the official AC adapter, you may never run into any problems. The issue is, though, that you won't get any help from Nintendo if you do run into a problem. But this is a your mileage may vary kind of thing. So if you're willing to run a little bit of a risk, you we'll get some reward from the small form factor and different options. If you want to see a video about issues with going all digital on your game console, you can click right there, and I will see you in the next one.